Welcome to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. Joan and Janet are subtle energy empaths in the field of consciousness. Their passion is to support your evolutionary growth and change. Join them as they talk about our individual and collective evolutions. Explore what living consciously with energetic awareness means in our daily lives. Access with them a state of grace. There is no time, no space. Feel the warmth and acceptance and opening into infinite possibilities. Combining a broad collection of modalities and personal experiences, they share with humility and humor their appreciation for the body, mind, spirit connections that we call life. Now, here is Joan Newcomb and Janet Barrett. Welcome to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. We're your co host Joan Newcomb, coming to you from Tacoma, Washington, and my partner, Janet Barrett, from Portland, Oregon. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome, and welcome, we- welcome. <laughs> welcome. Welcome. <laughs> We have a great show for you today, and today we're talking about taxes and consciousness with Lola Jones. And uh, go ahead, say hi, Lola. (laughs) Sure, go ahead, say hi. Come on. Oh, I did. I said hi, everybody. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) hello. Hi. So we'll just slide right into there. Uh, Today on Conscious Conversations, we're talking about taxes and consciousness with Lola Jones. And Lola is a spiritual teacher and creator of Divine Openings and the author of Things Are Going Great in My Absence, How to Let Go and Let the Divine Do the Heavy Lifting. And through her books, her online courses, audios, retreats, and certified Divine Openings training, she leads you beyond spiritual healing to spiritual awakening and sustained enlightenment. And her website is www.divineopenings.com And what are our websites, uh, Joan? We need to get those out of the way. Yes, yes. So, um, let me see. Well, well, let me say the show. (laughs) It's like all of a sudden... It, there is no agenda. It is all over the place. So um, right. I just want to let you know the show uh, has on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. And you can find us on Facebook by looking for Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. And you can find us on Twitter at Joan and Janet. And we are on YouTube at uh, Joan and Janet Consciousness. Or you can search us uh, with Conscious Conversations. And we're also asking you to give us your suggestions of things for us to talk about and give us uh your questions, things you're curious about, and uh, we will answer your questions on the air. And my website is janetandbeyond.com, and you can find out all kinds of great things about that. And Joan, your website's at? Is joan-nukem.com, and yeah, you can find out about me there too. So let's get on to the show because Lola's sitting there waiting for us. Hi, Lola. Hi, I was really excited about your topic, and I'm fine that you told me about it three minutes ago. I, I speak uh, <laughs> spontaneously. I speak spontaneously all the time, even before leading a five day retreat. I have no idea what I'm going to say, and it's pulled forth from the highest place I can access at the time, and it's also influenced by the people who are listening and what they need to hear. So I had a totally blank mind. I was sitting here waiting for you to call. Nothing going through my mind. You could have, bats could be flying around in there and there'd be plenty of room. So I'm excited about this topic. We're all kind of in the same space about it. Joan and I were talking before we went to record that and to call you is so what we so like to share with our listeners is that no matter how much control you think you have, give it up because you don't have any. And in doing that, you allow for the spontaneous and the instantaneous to show up and the delight that comes to that because you can hear your joy in your voice of like, oh, let me just be there. Oh, yeah, (laughs) yeah. And I like to actually look for that place that's a co-creation. I like to practice honing the the wisdom to know when it's mine to say what and Mm -hmm. and how and where and all of that. And when it's best to just let go and let the divine do the heavy lifting and let the divine put the words in my mouth and not plan. And I don't always get it 
exactly right, of course, being human. And the trial and error even has its benefits of just Mm -hmm. trying something and, well, that didn't work. Let's see. Maybe I needed to (laughs) let go more. Or that didn't work. Maybe I need to say what I want. Maybe I need to tell the presence what I want. And uh, the presence is maybe sitting there waiting to hear what I want instead of waiting to tell me what I need. So, but it, I think it changes all the time, and there's this wonderful flow and uh, co-creation, a partnership, sort of. Yes, yeah. definitely. So, what what is it? You've been doing this a long time. I mean, yeah. you're yeah. of a certain age and a certain <laughs> relaxation about it. And so, if we use the word heart space because we that's what we like to call heart centered unified consciousness what did, how did you get to a place where that has meaning for you in your language what would might be your language if it's different oh well maybe it's the same thing i think we all have our own unique perspectives for a very good reason Uh, Some people can hear one better than they can hear another. Some people who can't hear me can hear, you know, Mm -hmm. Marianne Williamson, or they can hear Eckhart Tolle. And then some people can hear me who cannot hear those people. Mm -hmm. And so I think what I say a lot is that I help people get out of their head, which is very limited, the intellect and the brain, it's a very small Mm -hmm. space, and get into their body and their Uh, unlimited energy Mm -hmm. and heart is definitely a part of it heart is that softer place that that also the mental doesn't have you'll notice when you're speaking with someone who's more mental there's a sharpness to it and they don't say sharp he has a sharp mind or she has a sharp mind for nothing (laughs) there's a sharpness to it and maybe that's good when you need to be incisive about facts but it's very narrow and pointed, mm-hmm. and that's the way the mind is. But the heart is soft and diffuse, and thank you for this opportunity. I've never said this, said it this way before. And the heart can expand out into a much broader perspective and doesn't have to shine that laser beam on things, but can be very open and let things in. Plus, I think when we're in our hearts, we're closer to being in our bodies. Now, not always is being in the heart uh, all the way in the body, but Mm -hmm. it's closer to being all the way in the body, and we could even do some things later, if you like, about taking Mm -hmm. people down into their bodies, because for me, um, embodying is the intention rather than ascending rather than ascending mm-hmm. out of the mm-hmm. body or any mm-hmm. of that ascending at all. It's like, let's bring heaven down to earth. Let's let's get right. all the way in our body. Right. So for all our listeners who, who join us regularly, or this is the first time, when we reference through consciousness technologies and we talk about heart-centered space, we're talking not only about the physical heart that gives you a placement, we're talking about emotional heart, which gives you the coloration that, of life that's personal to you. But it's also, when you go beyond that, heart means the core, the essence of all, and that is that unified field of consciousness. And so that... All that together makes the field of the heart. And so what you so lovely described, Lola, was how in your terminology, all those different places, you talked about the physical, you talked about the warm and softness of the emotional range, and then also how you go beyond and you connect to all those other places. So that's what's so enjoyable about our show is with our guests who have different references. It's all pretty much the same thing. I think it's just different ways that we engage the conversation. Yeah. What you got there, Joan? What you tracking? Uh, I was, I, was, I, I have been tracking and um, <laughs> it was great because uh, we were all, you were all saying the same thing with different words. And, mm-hmm. um, and I loved Lola, I love the way that you really defined it uh, between sort of the mental sharpness and the shining, the laser beam on something and versus dropping into the heart area, which is, uh, which really expands you into the infinite. And, um, and that you can, the, the thing I notice is that you can have that great opening and be in your body at the same time. You know, Um, you don't have to space out to be here. You can experience all this from in the form as well. 
Yes, I just find that when people focus too much on so-called higher energies, their lives are not showing the results of it. Their lives are not necessarily experiencing the benefit of it. I counseled a guy the other day who channels all the archangels and very high spirits, but he has no money. Mm -hmm. and a very intelligent man, a very accomplished man, but he wasn't, again, bringing it down to earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I I think what people have forgotten is that they really are the center of their universe. Yeah. And we are so, so entrained through uh, history and social, you know, religious, spiritual practices and metaphysics and all that, that, that everything is coming down to us when really I think it's everything radiating out of us because Mm -hmm. there was only consciousness to begin and then we informed and it's not like, so there's a different sense of sequentialing or organizing information. Uh, Consciousness in the trainings that I've had, I appreciate where things ripple out from us and ripple back in. And so Mm -hmm. in that flow of things, it's how I, how I feel, how I connect, how I think is how my world reflects around me. And, um, and <laughs> there's the cat. Well, it the is a conversation. Is... Make it four way conversation. Yeah, right. exactly. The world is reflecting around it. So, yes. yeah. mm-hmm. well, this cat was always referred to as God's familiar by me 16 years ago when I got her. So she's, yeah. she's, show, she's showing up in her own way. So, well, and, and our th- subject we're starting with is taxing. Because in the United States here on April 15th, this is the day we get to put forth um, and our tithing to our nation. And some of us feel good about that. Some of us don't feel or feel okay about it. You can feel lots of different ways about it. But the approach we wanted to take with consciousness today in this conversation that we're going to share, that we're having, is how things do tax us. In that, it feels like a burden, and it doesn't matter whether it's your your uh, you know ten ninety nine or whatever it is, or your obligation you feel about something. How do we, in, from a conscious awareness space, deal with those things that seemingly would take a toll from us? And how do we give back? How do we let it go? So, are we ready to drop into heart space, everybody here? Yeah. yeah, well, we're going to drop into heart and space and transform that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think we are. So let's play it, and we'll take a few minutes. So everybody, just sit back and relax, no matter what you're doing. And the part of you that can track this with us, and let it just listen, the part of you that needs to be going on in your daily life, you can do that too. But that part that would like to deepen your experience of what life is and this conversation. Let it just relax. Drop your shoulders. Notice your breath. There you go. And this really feels like a fallback into really soft, billowy bed. So everybody, just allow yourself to drop back into that bed And there, as you drop into that heart, your physical heart, become aware of that. And then become aware of the softness around it. Let those doors open and see the coloration, see the objects, see what you notice in your emotional terrain. Give thanks for having your emotions, but don't be too attached. Just notice. Might be colorful, it might be black, it might be any number of things. And allow those doors to now open that you see there. And welcome to the all. Into the core, the essence of where you and I are all one. And our individuality is subtle, 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 subtle. And let's just notice. So, feel that. And I do want to mention to everyone, you you will hear the silence on this show. And that's really what we celebrate for all of us together is the silence, the quiet, the peace. Because out of that, 
is where clarity comes. So just notice. <sighs> All right, ladies, what do you notice, Lola? I'm a lover of the silence myself, of course, <laughs> you know, leading five-day <laughs> retreats and encouraging t- people to cultivate the silence. I I immediately drop down and, and relish that. Yeah, that's nice. How are you doing, Joan? Um, I'm I'm loving the silence, too. I, I, I realize that doesn't always work, you know, on the radio, but... <laughs> 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 but, you know, with this, I don't have to say anything, Janet, because you can just do all the talking. But... <laughs> <laughs> You're really enjoying yourself. I can feel uh, that. Yeah. All right. Well, this is, but that's the truth of it. Out of the quiet, there's so much. It is so filling to be able to just be present. So maybe we right. notice something that's bothering us, okay? Something that it has been taxing your spirit. And just allow that to show up. And just notice it. Does it stay? Does it go? Does it engage in conversation? Let it just be information. And just notice what happens when you allow it to just be information. And we'll check in before we leave the space and see how how it might occur to you then. Oh, oh gosh, ladies, we could just be here for the next 40 minutes. Quiet, huh? <laughs> that is the joy of it. So, I'm interrupting the silence because uh, my I'm floating back to you know what this is really about. Or at least you know what for me tax day is really about expressing appreciation. Mm. And you know, so if I'm paying taxes, it's like I'm expressing appreciation for you know, the roads and the schools and the things like that. And, and so I'm in, I'm in agreement with that as, as it is happening. I'm, I'm appreciating the support that's around me. So, you know, Janet, you, you had been mentioning earlier about well-being and getting to a sense of well-being with us. Um, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I was driving to someplace earlier today and I found myself in a state of gratitude for the signal light at the four direction corner and I was thinking okay here I am and I'm pretty aware and the, I, I so appreciated that there was a street with a signal that direct, it was directing all these other drivers because I really we're all co-creating but I have no control over what any of them do but we are all in agreement that when we come to this corner we stop and we <laughs> <laughs> and in in means- Portland, yes. In DC, <laughs> no. But yes, <laughs> it's a suggestion in DC. Yeah. And and it was like, oh, I'm so glad that that there's infrastructure here. And as I drove down the highway, it was like, oh, here's the path. I can take this path. I don't have to go over hill and deal with my car and yard. I can just go to this place where everyone's been, and we're all in agreement that this is a way to go. And I, and it was like, my husband's always, how do you get excited over every little thing? And I'm like, well, because I really appreciate that it didn't take any more stress than that, right? I just had to park my car because I usually have pretty good flow when I drive and things show up and, you know, I get around easily and um, simple things like that. So I really wasn't taxed, you know. Some people get into road rage. Uh, I don't think I've ever had road rage. Doesn't Not in my world. Now, where do you live, uh Lola? I live outside of Los Angeles uh, in Ojai. It's near Santa Barbara. Oh, okay. Mm. That's a nice area. Is it more desert? More desert? Uh, It's indescribable. It's mountainous. It's, uh, it's, It's beautiful. And you, how did you find it? Why did you find it? Oh, I was, uh, done with Austin and was just looking for a place that felt like home and had a lot of horse riding trails and that uh, was just beautiful. Yeah. 
That's really, <laughs> this is very nice. It's so quiet. So for all our listeners, go with the quiet. Go, how do you articulate quiet? Isn't that interesting? How do we articulate it? It doesn't have to be verbal. How do you feel it in there? Well, Joan and I knew this would be an interesting show, Lola, so thank you. Mm. <laughs> Are you there, Joan? Yes, I'm actually, uh, I just, I just want to, I want to hear Lola's insights and it doesn't even matter what the topic is. <laughs> Got it. Sounds appropriate to me. Whatever you're noticing, Lola, go with it. Well, I was thinking about the whole taxation topic and, and what occurred to me first was that when people have a foundation of peace already laid, all these things seem to fall into place. It's, mm-hmm. I, I don't know whether you remember this about Divine Openings, but it's all about laying the foundation and starting the expansion process and getting these basics down, which continue to be the important thing. And then issues typically just seem to drop away. Mm-hmm. It's the issues drop away and the problems drop away and the getting hot and bothered drops away as the foundation is strengthened and that expansion and evolution just continues forever and ever and ever. Um, so I was thinking about, I, can, I will say, some mental things about how one can think about taxation. But what I typically do in my work is I won't even work with people until they read my book because it lays a foundation and it changes their consciousness so that what I do say can go in. Mm-hmm. And that book is mm-hmm. called Things Are Going Great in My Absence, How to Let Go and Let the Divine Do the Heavy Lifting. And it takes them through a series of experiences that are so beyond words that words alone don't convey it. But then when we talk about a topic, they're hearing it from a different consciousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I could say, for example, I love what you said about appreciation for all of the wonderful things that taxes pay for. I I love that. And I also can say, um, oh, I, I made a web card recently for my Facebook page, um, Divine Openings with Lola Jones, and it said, don't dash your vibration on the jagged rocks of things you cannot change right now. But saying that, and having somebody be able to not dash their vibration on those jagged rocks are two different things, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, telling people through the mind, again, uh, is different than having put them through a softening and expanding, a consciousness expanding process, and then saying that, and they go, ah, oh, yes, I can do that. I can I can get that. I can get that it's not going to do me any good. For instance, when I look around and see things being done with tax money that I don't think are wise, mm-hmm. there's that ability to not dash my vibration on the jagged rocks of things I cannot change today. Now there, And then there's this ability to have a big, expansive intention about that that will come true one day. I remember being 16 years old and being a health nut when being a health nut was unknown, and everybody thought it was really weird, and you couldn't get health food anywhere, especially in Fort Worth, Texas. But I did the best I could, and I just had this desire, this deep, deep desire that one day this would be mainstream. I didn't even mm-hmm. know the word mainstream when I was 16, but the desire mm-hmm. knew what I wanted, and the presence knew what I wanted. And I smile today as I go through the grocery store, and I see 
especially in California, and probably where you are too, in the West Coast, mm-hmm. I see health food everywhere. I get organics mm-hmm. in the regular mainstream grocery mm-hmm. store. So mm-hmm. it didn't happen right this red hot minute when I was mm-hmm. 16 and wanted to see change in that. It didn't happen right then, but it did happen. And uh, we could use the example of national debt. It's not like we want it. But but then, you know, we have the intention and it changes. There will be a drought. It's not what we want, but and it's not going to change today. But then we have the intention and it changes. And my best analogy for the... Um, laying a foundation so that we can truly, without kidding ourselves, and, you know, sometimes we say we want to have this intention, and I believe this is possible, but if our body's going, liar, liar, pants on fire, you know, it's it's, <laughs> it's not as powerful. Um, mm-hmm. So my best story for uh, laying the foundation and having the experiential opening, that's why I call it divine openings, because it's this series of openings, literally openings, and that was demonstrated to me in in such a clear way when uh, I got this uh, young Mustang filly that I f- first felt like I'd kind of gotten in over my head, and what am I doing at 61 trying to train a Mustang <laughs> filly who's only been off the range for you know, a very short period of time, and somebody started training her, but there's a lot left to do. And so I got this uh, video series, and this guy calls it the Clinton Anderson Training Method. He calls it the method. And so I got this system thinking, okay, it's going to teach me how to stop that bad habit of hers and that bad habit and that bad habit. And then I start thinking, oh, my other horse has this bad habit and that bad habit and this bad habit and that bad habit. And like we think about ourselves, I want to change this, I want to change that, I want more of this, I don't want that. And, you know, we've got, we call them issues. They're things we want to change. And let's say fear about money would be the issue in this if you hate paying taxes, fear of not having enough money, fear the government's going to take too much. Well, let's take all those issues, horses and people. And I started watching these videos thinking he's going to give me a technique for when the horse wants to bite you when you're saddling it. He's going to give me a technique to make it stop bucking. He's going to give me a technique to make it give me its head and let me guide it where I want to go. But lo and behold, it was just like divine openings. He didn't give very many specific techniques to fix specific issues at all. He just said, "Keep, keep practicing the method. And the method was some exercises and activities that you put your horse through that are fun for both of you that don't seem to have anything to do with those issues at all. They don't, it's, it's like, well, how would that fix the horse biting me? But Or how would that make him stop bucking? Well, the funny thing was, it was just like divine openings. You lay the foundation, you practice the method, and then all those issues went away. The one horse stopped bucking and trying to bite me when I was saddling him. The young Mustang filly just started straightening up and acting right and doing what I wanted her to do. And they both turned into little puppies. And and I have so much more fun with them now than I ever had before. We didn't work on a single issue. We just got that foundation really strong. I would even say expanded their consciousness and mine. My consciousness expanded to encompass more how horses think and Mm -hmm. horse reality. Their Mm -hmm. consciousness expanded because they started using different parts of their brain to learn and to open up and to bond with me and to respect me as their leader. And so the funny thing was it worked on both of us. Mm -hmm. And it was a whole new reality for me. I mean, I've been riding for uh, since I was uh, nine years old. So I've been riding for 50, 52 uh, years now. And it was a whole new thing for me. Mm-hmm. And so that's one way of saying that, you know, when I say don't dash your vibration on the jagged rocks of things you cannot change today, like things you see about the government or the tax code or how it's done, mm-hmm. um, you're able to do it. The more you have that foundation down, 
the more you're able to do it. I had the state of California recently take $20,000 out of my checking account because they decided I should have been paying taxes two years before I moved here. <laughs> and they were they were convinced that, that they should have 20 more thousand dollars. Nothing my accountant said to them could change their mind, and they took it out. And what is so wild, I, I jumped up and down and celebrated this moment. I just thought, okay, well, we'll deal with it. Well, you know, I'll hire somebody. They'll they'll communicate. They'll call him up. I'll take my accountant off the case. He failed. We'll I'll hire somebody else. In the, but there was nothing. There was no moment of, you know, heart dropping into the pit of the stomach and saying, oh, my God, you know. I was so celebrating that moment that I went, oh, my God, years ago, this is not how I would have responded to this before this solid foundation. This is not how I would have looked at this at all. It would have just struck fear in my heart. Oh, my God, look what they can do, and they've got that money, and that, but it just mm-hmm. wasn't. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a thing, if you know what I mean. Yeah. It wasn't. So, and that's so what because of the foundation. What you're describing so well for all our listeners and how we approach this is this is this is about being in the field of the heart. This is about the foundation of being able to not be in the thinking mm-hmm. or but allowing your thinking to come from heart. Yes. And that in that space where it's just energy in motion, you're in, that is your infrastructure, right? It shows you ways to go and you can go any place off the road you want. But it's how you engage life and daily life and even how those of us who do this for a living or as a way of life can get off track sometimes and see it not in certain areas, but it's easier to see it in other areas because we don't think of dealing with taxes and money from an open heart space. You know, you can feel the constriction coming over you. Um, and so it's like, okay, just go back to my flow. Where's my sense of flow and how I am in the world and, and how life is around me. And then you're not in a deficit position. You're in a power position to say, oh, okay, this is the way I'll approach this. You're in a neutral position. Mm-hmm. You're kind of- yes, and there was no effort required whatsoever. Right. It was just there because of that foundation. The foundation was there. And you kind of have to celebrate a state that will take money from you before you've been there. So it must have been you were in parallel universes or doing something. <laughs> <laughs> in consciousness. Is with, There's and then no you time go, or space is consciousness. Yeah. Well, in that case, I could be getting tax bills from all over the world because people tell me I work, for, I work with them in their dreams all over the world. So, oh boy, I already yeah, pay yeah. taxes in Germany. But now, that was a contrast several years ago when I I heard that. I lead retreats over in Germany and the UK. And the day I heard um, that the German government wanted taxes from me too, that was, I was, my foundation was not as solid. So that was two days of kind of like, okay, well, let's, let's, let's see what we're going to do here. And then that resolved beautifully and easily and smoothly. But I, I'm, I was celebrating that this next thing was, uh, no effort, where that one took a few days. My German counterpart over there and I put our heads together. We did. We had to talk to ourselves a little bit, but we did. We talked ourselves through it. We said, you know what? We can do this. And she was afraid because the German tax people are very strong. <laughs> and so she was afraid of, of having to deal with them. And we just and we got our vibration straightened out and got it clear, got it clean. And when she called, she got the most helpful, wonderful person that helped her navigate these uh, labyrinthian forms, very complicated things, and she didn't even have to hire a consultant. So she just attracted this beautiful well, I think that this soul. Is, in this conversation, this is about how in having, <sighs> getting in flow, and noticing how you're coming up against something or a sense that you're coming up against something and really being able to stop, not react, but just notice and notice where and why and what and how you want to play with it. 
and it is a sense of play. You had a sense of celebration, and it's a sense of appreciation. You can go lots of different directions with what we're faced with at times, and, you know, it's all about our sense of power. It's about finding uh, how how we are and who we are and what we are. And we we have listeners here from all over the world, and each of us is in a different country and dealing with different governments and bureaucracies and dictatorships and democracy and socialism and the council chief. And some places we feel very powerless in our experience. And what we would offer to you is this place of being centered and that in those challenges that you're facing, all you can do sometimes, that is all you have. And so we celebrate and share with you that place within. Yes. The experience and, of it is, is so much more powerful to share than the, than the thoughts or words about it. The, the vibrational field of it is so much mm-hmm. more powerful. Mm-hmm. Now, when you come to it as consciousness, you're, you're coming to whatever the detail of the story is, you're coming to it from a bigger space. And, um, you know, I was just thinking of a a video I saw on your website recently, Lola, where you were talking about, you know, you no longer resist any feelings. So, you know, it's like anger and discomfort, you know, bring it on, but they don't stay very long. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Exactly. Right. They're all part of the spectrum and you can't, you can't be in resistance to what you, your own experience. Oh my gosh, that is so much information. And you're really dishonoring yourself. When you don't allow yourself to have your experience and your emotional content, because that is the richness of life. That is the spectrum of life. And Joan, you mentioned in the beginning about well-being and well-being has to take place. That's what we're all striving for. It's not so much happiness. Happiness is an outcome down the road. If you have a sense of well-being, and what you're all, what we each are trying to do to maintain that, that is going to dictate how we relate to others and environment and groups and ourselves in maintaining what we think we need in order to have a sense of well being. And we're looking and sharing with all of us, and we have to be reminded ourselves of how we're all human and we're not getting out of this in any other form other than a discarnated body. So in this experience of our incarnation here, this embodiment, these are real things. There are forces. We make them real. You know, it's all a hologram, but it's uh, how to how to navigate how this human experience can show up for each of us. And there are no words about that. There's just experience. (sighs) That's nice. I just love the idea of someone dialing in right now. (laughs) (laughs) And the silence. And the silence, the stillness. I love the stillness. Hmm. So if life is just about well-being... I don't know. That's it for me. I don't know. What is it for you, Lola? What is life? Oh, life is for living. Yes. And it's, it's, yeah. Even the, the things we're not so crazy about in the moment, if we're willing, we can find in that contrast something in it. Mm-hmm. That And it's a choice. You know, if you say there's nothing valuable in there, then there's not. And if you say there is, there is. And that is personal choice. So, of course, I decide to say there's something in the contrast for me. Right. right. Well, like even celebrating that <laughs> in that crazy way, that circumstance, I went, wow, what a demonstration. What a demonstration of feeling safe and stable in this world. What a demonstration of feeling like the master of my money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nothing else could have demonstrated it 
Well, quite like there's that something kind to be said thing. for there are no rights, there are no wrongs. It's just information. And it's just you get, we each get to choose what we're going to do about it. You know, we might not be able to change our circumstances, but we can choose to relate to that information. That's our choice. That's what the personal choice is. Sure. And uh-huh. I believe we can change a lot of things over time through right. desire and intention. Mm-hmm. Moment that we may not be able to change. <laughs> right. There are those moments when we're like, okay, this is the way it is right now, but it's all temporary. One of my favorite mantras, when when things are not the way I want them right now, it's, oh, this is all temporary. My I, One of my jokes in the five-day retreats is because people go all, it, it's like accelerated everything. And one minute they'll say, Oh, I'm depressed, and I'll go. Oh, that's temporary. It'll you'll get over it. And then the next minute, they're oh, I'm blissed out, and I go. Oh, it's all temporary. You'll get over it. (laughs) Temporary. You'll get over it. (laughs) That's the truth of it, though. You know, if everything gets put on equal footing, it's us who you know who goes. Yeah, just go. Don't hang on to any of it. It's all temporary. (laughs) Just just float. Just surf it. Just surf. That's right. If you have that basis of well being. You know, you you get to know, oh, we can go back to well-being and we can get really excited, but we can also be something else, too. So, you yeah. know, um, yeah. and how to how to be in that place. Yes, yes. It's it's like the literal interpretation of that saying it's all good. It It really all can be. Guess, yeah. you know, sometimes people don't understand that. Right. Where, like, let's say, if somebody said, "I'm dying," there, there's, you know, of course, my large self says it's all good, and but you can't say that to people. And now I can say it about me if I said to somebody, "I'm dying," and, and they were, "Oh my God, no!" And I went, "No, it's all good." I can yeah. say that about me. Yeah. 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 How you doing there, Joan? It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> You were waiting a long time to say that, weren't you? <laughs> we set her up. What a setup. Uh, yeah, it is all good. And that's really what we want to share with people, is that right in this moment, the three of us and all of whoever might be paying attention, it is all good. And that can be enough. That can be enough to start here and now that it's all right. It is yes, and and I am gonna I'm gonna emphasize again for listeners though that um, when they read my book, things are going great in my absence. It it takes them to that place where they can feel that way, where that is just a natural response to some contrast. Is is that it's all good, and it and it doesn't do it through the head. It doesn't do it through. Mm-hmm teaching no. concepts it does it through taking them step by step through a series of experiences that build one upon the other until one day they just go well I don't understand all my anxiety disappeared I'm making more money I don't know what I did except I'm just secure in my well-being I'm I'm uh, I'm in the zone I'm able to get quiet I'm happy no matter what's going on outside of me what is going on here um, but it is that pure infusion of grace and that pure experience that it puts people through that that makes it possible to say those things and not just be spiritual bypassing, you know, that right. makes it possible to say those things and really feel them to their toes, to their core, mm-hmm. and and mean it, believe it, have it be true. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, there we go. So everybody just notice it's it's willing to take the time to put yourself first because perhaps you're the foundation in your family. Perhaps you're the 
what holds things together. But each of us needs to do this for ourselves. And Lola has spent a lifetime and had experiences and is able to share that with others now. And there are others who do the same work. And we look to create the space for you weekly here. And life doesn't have to be what you think it is. Life is much more than what you think it is. And that's what we look to share with with all of you. And so we're coming up on time, I think, to... Are you tracking time, Joan? Are we I, about I there? Time. Um, let me see. We're, uh, we, we started four minutes late, if you want to be in time and space here. <laughs> well, I've got that we've been running for about 45 minutes. So if we're yeah, at 55 that's right. minutes. Right. So we've why got don't, 10 minutes. We've got 10 yeah. minutes. All right, everybody. So we just want to notice now what you might have noticed in the first place, that thing that maybe was challenging you in some way. And see if you even remember what it was or if maybe it's reorganized itself into something else. And bring your awareness back and bring it a little more back. Bring it back into that emotional terrain and notice the emotional terrain now. Does that seem different? Because there is nothing to fear here. There is only you. And just notice how you've put information together and how it might be different now, how you emotionally are resonating, maybe in a sense of well-being or relaxation, stress-free, whatever it might be. Or notice the thing over there that might be that might be catching your eye and just thank it for catching your eye. It's okay. And then come back to your heart, your physical heart. And notice it beating and notice your breath. And just allow yourself to come back and notice yourself get bigger again with your awareness and bring it back in and give it better. Let it just resonate out, ripple out, allow for it to, to ripple back and feel how you're in the flow of whatever you perceive flow to be. And then it's much bigger than you thought it was. And as you go back into your daily life, we thank you for having joined us here. And we want to say thank you to Lola and all your great dynamics, Lola. Anything you'd like to leave our guests with? Or you're the guest. or No, they're all our guests, too. Everybody we're all listeners. our guests. <laughs> we're all our guests. Oh, just an admonition to open up and let it all in. Yeah. Yeah. And Doesn't get much better than that. Yes, and thank you for the conversation and for the opportunity to share. Oh, thank, thank you very you. much. So what else do we need to talk about, Joan? Well, yeah, I want to thank Lola, too. It, just, it was lovely having you on. I was really enjoying basking in, in the energy <laughs> that you provided for us. So thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. yeah, it it's builds that thing. morphic field of whatever this is, oh, yeah. nice and big, and all the flavors that we all are. It's a spectrum. And Lola, are you? Do you have something you're going on to? Do you have a workshop or something coming up you want to mention? Well, uh, on the website divineopenings.com, there are always a number of five day silent retreats listed in Santa Barbara, California, Germany, in beautiful southern Germany, Bavaria, and in UK. Uh, so I've got, uh, let's see, three five-day retreats coming up in the remainder of this year. We just had one in Santa Barbara. There is a call um, where people bring their intentions and questions to a, well, it's actually a webinar these days for years and years that it called. And I can, uh, they can see me and at, toward the end, everybody can, gets to flash on the screen and we get to see our community and appreciate their shining faces. 
so there are always events uh, on the website, which makes it easily accessible to everybody everywhere. All right. What do we need to wrap up with, Joan? Thank you, Lola. Yes, yeah, just remind folks, uh, Lola's website is divineopenings.com. So. And um, just to remind folks about our show is on Facebook. You can find us, uh, Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet, and join the group and join the fun. You can follow us on Twitter at Joan and Janet. Uh, I'm on Twitter as well, at Joan Newcomb, if you want to see uh, historical photographs and pictures of corgis. Um, and then also, <laughs> uh, th- our show is on YouTube, uh, Conscious uh, Conversations. You can find us there. And uh, send us your suggestions of things for us to talk about. Uh, we would love to hear the things you're curious about, and we will answer them on the air. Um, and then real quick, my website is joan com, and you can see more stuff there as well. And mine is janetandbeyond.com, and, or you can email me at Janet, directly at janetb at janetandbeyond.com. And we love to hear from you, uh, however many different ways there are to get a hold of us. And uh, let us know how you do with being in what we would might call heart space. You can call it what you like. And if you're noticing the different flavors from week to week or however you're catching us on our podcasts or uh, archival information or live, and what you might be noticing about that. Is this enriching your life? Are you getting all that you might want from it? And uh, how how this can make a difference in your life and maybe how it does. This kind of work is all about living authentically and whatever that means. And it means not in how you rationalize and reason your life away, but how you come from your core essence of who you are, expressing that wonder and how that is valuable and real and that we like connection like that. We like to deal with. It was lovely today to walk through the hospital and smile at people and say hello and everybody smiled and said hello back to me and that doesn't always happen in a hospital <laughs> and and but i had already been grateful for the streets so, you know the freeway so i think i was just still in my flow and um you want this to be every day in your life and so when you go to the store who you talk to, how you get your groceries, how you get to your car. And there are so many moments. It is not only event driven. Your life is not only event driven. This is really important. It is in the moments between the events where magic happens. It is how you get from point A to point B. And we look to support all of us in that you can pay attention. We take so much for granted. And Joan, you just had this great trip to Europe. And what did you, how, how did being in heart space make a difference, do you think, for you? That's so funny because, um, yeah, I had an experience, um, and I'm trying to remember, I we were leaving Berlin and going to London. And um, it was a very late flight, and I was I was sitting way off in this corner uh, trying to charge my phone. And all these people started filing on by to get on this flight, and I started smiling at the little kids. And then, almost by mistake, I smiled at some adults. And you know, people don't people aren't smiling at eleven thirty at night, especially not in Germany. <laughs> and I suddenly realized maybe the whole reason I was there, and maybe the whole reason I was in Europe at all for those sixteen days, was just to smile at people. So I started playing a game of smiling with people coming up and down the stairs, and. <laughs> One person smiled back and waved at me, and there was like, "Yes, <laughs> you are a kindred spirit." So that was funny. The smile, the smiling thing. So. And, and for Lola, how about for you on a daily experience? Is this something you come in and out of with your awareness, or is it just there when you need it, or is it just the way you live? Well. I wish I could say that I never have a moment of contrast and that uh, it's always easy to be my large self, but I will say more and more and more. It's 
it's an unfolding. Maybe I like surprises. Maybe <laughs> I, I'm one of, I always say if, if somebody told you you could have everything you ever wanted just delivered today, it would just be overwhelming. I mean, wouldn't we rather have yeah. a little of it? A little yeah. more of it every day, yeah. a little, and then we can appreciate the contrast, and we can look back, and we can go, "Oh my God, some time ago, this wouldn't have been so easy. Some time I didn't have this before. I love unfolding, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. I celebrate the unfolding, and it does get better and better every year. Yeah, yeah, we got to go with it. All right, That's I think we're there, Joan. True. Yes, thank, thank you, you so, so much, much. Lois. Wonderful way to end things. So you've been listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet, and I'm your host, Joan Newcomb. And I'm Janet Barrett. And we'd like to thank you all for joining us as Consciousness Expressing and Evolving. You've been listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. Thanks so much for helping to co-create the show. No matter whether you're tuning in live or listening on demand, you energetically contribute to our collective experience. Joan and Janet love to hear from you and invite you to email your comments and ideas for them to explore each week. Contact them at Conscious with Joan and Janet at gmail.com. Tune in next Wednesday for another great show at 3 p.m. Pacific Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, and 10 p.m. UTC.